An English politician, David Amos, was recently murdered by a 25-year-old Somalian immigrant who is also Islamic. It's being referred to as an Islamic terrorist attack. And what's interesting about it is in the days following this horrific stabbing, the mainstream media rushed in, like they always do, to tell us exactly how we should feel and how we should react. And apparently we should seek unity. Unity not with the people who knew this man and his family, not unity with them, no, unity with the ideology of the murderer. We should seek unity with that. And you know, it's always kind of flabbergasting to me how whenever you have, say, a white guy who commits some act of horror of some type or becomes a mass murderer, you never have the mainstream media stepping in to say, well, let's figure out what his ideology was, what his motivations were, and you know, seek unity with those. It's not really considered to be a reasonable thought, really, and yet that's exactly what we hear in the case of Islamic terrorism. It's not all Muslims. It's not that ideology that caused the person to, you know, commit this act. It's not the fact that he was devout in that particular religion and that whenever a person is devout in that particular religion, he has a propensity toward that direction because he's, you know, actually reading the words of his book. No, it's, it's none of that. It's, it's simply that we should, we should seek unity and we should all be friends and coexist. That's what we're told. And, you know, it, it, when you really think about it, People don't fear devout Christians. Like the more that a person becomes Christian, for example, he doesn't become more likely to commit acts of terror, more likely to engage in acts of violence, right? And yet you do have that when a person becomes devout in the Islamic or Muslim sense. Anyway, after this uh, politician, David Amos, was laying on the ground and bleeding to death, and he had been stabbed, the police cordoned off the area, and a priest in the area uh, came over, rushed over, because he wanted to give last rites to this dying man who was also a devout Catholic. And the police wouldn't let the priest through. They wouldn't allow this to happen. And it seems to me a type of sort of perverse evil for the police to refuse what would have been the wishes of the dying man, because to them, his death or his dying was nothing more than a crime scene. He wasn't a person with individual rights and freedoms and beliefs and none of that mattered. All that mattered was their own bureaucracy. And there's something that ought to disturb us all about that and I do think it's kind of endemic of the sort of thought processes that go on in England, especially in areas like its police force and throughout its kind of, I don't want to call it the upper echelons of its culture, but certainly throughout its academic system, throughout its political system, you have a sort of contempt toward uh, religiosity, toward Christianity most especially, uh, and in favorance of an adherence to the state above all else. And that's kind of really a microcosm of what it looks like. No, you can't allow this priest to come in and to pray for this dying man. Instead, we have our paperwork to do and you have to stay out.